I'd like to talk about descending shifts. Before I do that though, I'd like to remind everyone that when you shift, you need to release the weight a little bit so that the shift can be made effortlessly and you will not bog down in the process. I remember as a youth trying to shift and sometimes squeezing so hard and my ear would say, you're not there, you're not there, and I'd be trying to get there, but I'm, it's like stuck in the mud because my fingers were squeezing the neck. Fingers, opposable thumb, you do not want to grab the neck while you're shifting. So a good exercise for that would be just, I'm putting my one down on the A string and I'm sliding up and down the neck. You might start from a firm tone and then release, maybe go up to a third position and then reapply the weight. So you're in, out, in, okay? The right hand does the same kind of release. You're in, it releases, and then it's back in again. I don't imply squeezing, but a firmness. But you release a little of that during the shift. It's very quick, and we'll work on that coordination in a moment. All right, so let's do a shift from first position to third on a one, A string. All right, so you're on a B, you go up to a D, and then let's go back down. So you have a firmness, don't squeeze it, but you have a quality sound or a core to your sound. Release it, shift to the D, I'm in third position, and then let's go back down you'll notice the thumb and the first finger travel together, okay? We'll do it on a down bow. And then turn your bow around. Do it again. So, do you feel that release during the shift? You're almost, instead of shifting this way, you think of the shift as having a little arc to it. The fingers into the string, it arcs up like a rainbow and back down. Now you do not leave the string. This is what I feel. I don't. I do not see it. You don't press the string into the wood of the fingerboard during the shift. You lift up, and then when you get there, you add it back. Okay. Now let's go to third position. We're on our D. Release the weight. Shift to first, and as soon as you're there. You add the weight again. Again, notice the thumb and the first finger. They move together. Now let's try and coordinate it with another note. Okay, let's think about going D to a C sharp and then a B. So we're just going down in a scale here. If you think of your first finger, once you begin, it's the old finger, and this the old finger is the one you shift on. Your new finger is going to be the next note, which is two, right? C sharp. So what I want you to do is shift on the old finger, get to the new position, add the new finger. Release weight, shift on the old finger, thumb moves with it, add new finger. Now let's coordinate it with a bow change. We're on a down bow. We're going to shift. When we get to the new position, you'll turn your bow and add your new finger. And you must coordinate those together. So you shift on the one. Carl Flesch called it an auxiliary note. This intermediate note, which is B. You're on a D. B is the intermediate or auxiliary note. And C sharp is the next note or the new finger, the new note. And the reason that you go down on a one is because I don't want to hop. It's not that. It is connecting the shift by leaving the old finger down through the shift and adding the new finger. Understand? Now we're going to coordinate it with the bow change, which is down, up. And I add the up and I add the new finger at the same time. And at that moment, then I reapply the, the weight to the finger and the bow hand. I'm in with a focus sound. I release the weight, shift. I'm on my auxiliary note. I add the new finger and reapply weight. 
to have that core sound again. Understand? Now if we were to take it up, let's use the same notes. Let's be in sixth position on the E string. Okay, we're on a D again. We're going to go down to third position on the E string, sixth position to third position, and add a th three. So D, A, C sharp. I have my old finger, I have my auxiliary notes, I have my new finger. Understand? Now, something that happens with a lot of my students here is they'll buckle the wrist or they'll leave the thumb behind. The thumb and the first finger need if you're in six they've separated a little bit as you've come around they need to meet up I have this pulling sensation pulling together if I were coming up higher coming from up higher they would meet up and then travel together down to first position you do not let the wrist come under they meet the wrist is flat they travel together okay I'm in six I come to the thumb, the thumb and the first finger travel together, right there to third position, I'm on my auxiliary note, I add my new finger. Remember to release the weight, and then add it again. Now we'll coordinate it and try and make it disappear. Let's do it with vibrato. You hear a little bit of the shift. You can get rid of that even more by more release of the bow. Understand? It's a process. It, build it up. Understand it. Understand the auxiliary note. Understand where you release the weight in the finger and where you reapply it. Understand that the thumb and the first finger travel together as much as possible through maybe fourth position, even fifth. By fifth, I'm dropping under. I go in the neck joint. And then they separate, okay? When you come back down, they meet up again somewhere around fifth. Depending on what string you're on, too, it's different for the G, but still, right around fifth, they meet up and they travel back together. So you have your old finger, you have your new finger, you have your auxiliary note, you have the release of tension or weight during the shift. I hope all of that's very clear. Uh, good luck.